What's happening guys? It is me again, the Bladed Brony, coming at you today with story time. This is a new segment I'm starting for my channel. I got the idea from Jeff from Cutlery Lover. So Jeff, you know, thank you for the idea. And basically all I'm going to do is just tell you little stories. You know, entertaining stories. Mostly, they're all going to be true stories. So, you know, don't come here just looking for, you know, crazy comedy. But I figured, you know, just sit here talk to you guys nothing really fancy as you can see I'm in a new location well not really new I decided for story time why be uncomfortable so I'm just gonna film it here while sitting in my recliner and well today I'm gonna tell you the story about the man on the bridge so I'm gonna light up a smoke Y'all want something to drink? So let's go. My first real job, you know, first, you know, weekly paycheck, you know, and all that kind of, you know what I'm talking about, you know, an actual job, you know, part time job, about 15, 20 hours a week, was when I was working as a courtesy clerk at Dillon's. Now, if you don't know what that is, basically they do everything. You know, they stand there, you know, the guys, who, the people who bag your groceries at Dillon's, that's what a courtesy clerk is. And you're probably thinking, well, that's not much, that's just bagging groceries. Well, they gotta do a lot more than that. Now, they gotta bag your groceries, they gotta go get your groceries if you forgot something. If you break, if something gets broken, they have to go back in the shelves, you know, find a new one, bring it back to you. They gotta help you. They have to help you outside, unload your, you know, unload everything for you. You know, bring the carts back in, bring your cart back in. You know, clean the bathrooms, clean up the parking lot, clean up the spills. You know, refill the bottles. You know, refill the garbage cans. You know, throw the garbage out. Pretty much, they do everything, and they get paid shit. And when I was working there, I only got paid like seven fifty an hour. Which was what pissed me off, you know, not that I was getting paid minimum wage, because, you know, that's normal, but. What would happen was they would give me, like, very little hours a week. Like, one time, I'm not even kidding you. How often do you think people would work in a week? You know, somewhere between 15 and 40 hours. That's usually what you think. One week, I only got six hours. You know, it wasn't worth it. And, you know, if I could, if I got treated better at Dillon's, I would definitely go back there, but, no. But, basically, I was getting screwed every five seconds. And I told them, you know, straight up, you know, before I even worked, they're like, I have insomnia. Which means, I sleep and you know, I'm awake all night, so can I please get hours later in the day? Well, no, I'd always get the very, i always get the first ship, which was at, start at 7 o'clock in the morning. And you think, oh, there wouldn't be a lot of people there. There's a lot of people at Dillon's at 7 o'clock in the morning in my hometown. But, you know, let's not go into my personal problem with Dillon's. You know, I might do a video like that later. But every now and then, you know, yeah, I get my night shift, which was the shift I preferred. You know, because I don't want to sound like a rude guy, but I really don't like dealing with customers. In the night shift, guys, we really didn't deal with a lot of customers. You know, basically all we did was, you know, push the carts around, clean up the bathrooms, you know, clean out the garbage cans, take them out, refill them, you know, sign off on the final sheets. You know, not, hard, not bad work. And like I said, I kind of like the night shift myself. That... What happened was where I lived at this time, I was living with a friend of mine from church. And, well, let me show you. No, you know, handmade, handmade diagram. You know, there's where, she, you know, there was Dylan's. There was her house. But to get to her house, I had to, you know, cross the highway, which ain't very safe. Then cross this bridge over the river. Well, what happened 
was I got, I was, you know, this was the night shift. I got all my work done at 11. And I went to, and I started walking home. You know, I don't have a car. I can't drive. You know, don't ask about that. I might tell you that in another story, too. But what happened was... When I was walking home, you know, when I crossed the highway, I saw a guy walking in front of me, which I thought nothing of. I'm thinking, hey, maybe he's going home too. Maybe he's just going for a walk. You know, you never know. So I'm about 20 feet behind him, I guess. And all of a sudden, you know, he just looks behind me. He looks behind him because, you know, he probably heard my footsteps. And next thing I know, he just, you know, bolts. You know, runs like hell. I'm thinking, you know, what the hell's happening? But, you know, I don't want to, you know, chase after him because, you know, all I had was a pocket knife, you know, that, about that size. For all I know, this guy could have been on drugs. He could have had a gun. Who knows? He, if I chased him or, you know, tried to help him or anything, he could have turned around and killed me. So I'm, you know, keeping a steady pace. Huh? But the second he got, then he started running on the bridge, you know. And when he got about halfway across the bridge, which was about 25, 30 feet above the water, which is full of gars and snakes and snappy turtles, you know, pretty dangerous creatures. And there's about that, and there's not really a lot of water because, you know, on one side, you know, bi you know, big pile of rocks. Next side, big pile of rocks. You know, branches, limbs, all that stuff. But what happens when he gets halfway between a bridge? He just jumps off. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. This guy literally hopped off the side of the bridge. And yeah, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear like a thud. I didn't hear like a splash. I heard nothing. So, you know, hell yeah, I'm worried. So I go running up there, and I look over the side, you know, there's nothing. You know, there's no ripples in the water. You know, he's not there. Basically, it's like the guy disappeared into thin air. Which is creepy, I mean, let's face it. So I did the first, the only logical thing I could think of, I pulled out my cell phone, which, thank God, was actually charged for once, coming from work. I call 911, you know, and they said they'd go investigate it, so I get home, and, you know, the cops come to my door, you know, saying, you know, we didn't see anything, we don't know anything, we don't know who you're talking about, basically that was the end of the story. You know, there was no reports of it in the newspaper. There was nothing on the news itself. So I have no clue whatever happened to that guy. And I know what you're thinking. Ghost. You never know. I have seen some pretty fucked up stuff in my time. Could have been a ghost. Hell, I used to live in a haunted house. I had haunted property. The property we owned on the side of us, it was also haunted. A lot of ghosts in that town, a lot of fucked up shit, saw a lot of UFOs, saw some pretty big animals that ought not be, you know, in Kansas. So I have no clue whatever happened to that guy. You know, maybe I imagined it. You know, maybe it was a ghost. Maybe he died for all I know, hell. You never know. Just every now and then you see some pretty creepy shit. You know, it's, like I said, it was messed up, but there's not a lot you can do in life. You know, you're going to see some fucked up shit in your life. And to this day, because that's been about two years ago, I still think about that gay. Because I know people would say, like, oh, you just imagine it. I didn't imagine that. That guy was there. So I'll never, you know, really have closure on that incident. You know, it's going to be in the back of my mind for the rest of my life. You know? What are you going to do? What am I going to do, I guess? There's nothing I can do.
I just all all I know is you know that guy's always gonna be in my memory. <sighs> Guys, that's about all I got for you, really. Well, that's about the end of story time. So this has been Nibbleated Brony signing out. Bye.